I took my youngest son, Colin, with me to my older son's baseball practice. During the practice, Colin and I were uh, playing hide and seek around the car. He tripped and fell. He did have a little cut on his eyebrow, but he was still running and, and having fun. He's had worse falls before, so we didn't think nothing about it and went to bed. Next morning, I went to go wake up Colin. He couldn't sit up. I was just thinking it was the flu, but when I realized that he couldn't walk, I called my husband. I rushed back to the house, drove to the hospital as quick as we could. Once we got to the ER, we told him that he had a fall the previous night, and so then they think it was a concussion. So he had him do a CAT scan. The uh, CAT scan came back negative. When we brought him into the ER, at first it was his legs that he couldn't move. It got to where he couldn't sit up, he couldn't move his arms. By that night, he was basically almost completely paralyzed. The only thing he could do was breathe. He could not drink his bottle. He could not eat his food. He just laid there. And then his oxygen levels were dropping. So the next day they decided to do a spinal tap to rule out meningitis. That came back negative. It was really hard seeing my son paralyzed and he was getting worse and worse. My husband and I decided to have him transferred to a children's hospital in Memphis. The doctors told us that if we had been 30 minutes later that he would have went into cardiac arrest. I thought I was gonna lose him. Within an hour of us getting to the uh, ICU, they brought in a team of infectious disease doctors and a team of neurologists, and they all did a very thorough examination, finding a tick behind Colin's ear and removing it. They put him on an antibiotic for the tick. That night, um, he started having a little bit of movement in his feet. I think that if my wife and I hadn't made the decision to go to another hospital, I don't think he would have made it. So this is something called tick paralysis. Most people haven't heard about it. I mentioned diagnostic dilemmas. Sometimes in medicine, well, fell and hit his head and you become so fixated on right. that event, which is totally unrelated from what Colin was dealing with. The blessing is that Colin is doing well. He joins us with his parents, Stephanie mm -hmm. and Jerry, via Polycom from Tennessee. And uh, <laughs> looks like Colin is doing pretty well. He's doing great. Wait. So hey, glad Colin. to hear that. But you know, again, we're, we're talking about medical history, and the key thing is you two, as good parents, you realize that the activity level of, of your son was just so different than normal. One minute he was running around fine, and the next minute he just wasn't his usual, usual self. That raises the red flag right. or something going on. And something else that yeah. you did that I admire is Obviously, not every facility is equipped to deal with every problem, and you yeah. really felt like Colin's life was in jeopardy, and you, you raised the red flag and said, we need to transfer, we need to, transfer to a bigger medical center, and, and in many ways, you credit that with saving Colin's life, right? Yes, it, it completely saved his life, because if we had not have him moved, he probably, he would have went into cardiac oh. arrest and potentially had died. Had you ever seen ticks on yourselves or on Colin before? Oh yes, we get ticks. So you're all in the time. you're in an area where you have to be vigilant. And this look, tick yes. bites are very common. Typically we talk about infectious diseases. Tick paralysis is very different than almost everything we've ever right. talked about on the it's show. It's not Lyme disease. It's not Lyme disease and it actually hangs out. This neurotoxin hangs out in their salivary glands. So while the tick is feeding, <laughs> that neurotoxin gets into, in this case, Colin's blood, and that leads to what we call an ascending paralysis. Initially starts with the legs, inability to walk. And if you're a parent and you ever notice that this is happening and it gets to the point where breathing becomes difficult, what's really shocking, and this case bears it out, the minute the tick is removed, shortly thereafter, symptoms will start to improve. So where did Colin go? <laughs> he's out in the he woods. He went to play. <laughs> yeah, he's out. So, so Colin literally went from being, you know, not moving, full paralysis, to now you can't keep him still. That's right. That's great. <laughs> he's well, we're glad you're here. Story. And <laughs> give Colin a big hug for us. We're just so happy that this has a happy ending. And it's due to your diligence as parents. So congrats to you. We'll be right back.